So I found this uh, water bottle in my backyard, and I believe that over about a billion years, the chemicals all came together. That water bottle evolved. evolved right? It evolved, it evolved over evolved time. Over nothing, right? It's possible. Oh, of course it's possible. I mean, we'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm, I'm Pastor, Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason, and we have with us today Professor Michael Behe. <laughs> what an honor it is to be sitting on our show uh, with the professor today. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about intelligent design. That's right. And we got a scripture for your day. We want to pray over your day. And thank you for making us the number one uh, daily Bible study on YouTube. Yes. By your likes and your shares. Yeah. And make sure you subscribe today. Click subscribe right now. Uh, today we're going to do a morning scripture. We're going to pray over your day. And the professor is going to be enlightening us about God and science. Right. And so we're going to start with Romans chapter 1 and verse 20. It says this, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by things that are made. So the, the premise of this scripture teaches us that if we study what God made, we can see him, both his eternal power and his divine nature. That it just didn't just happen. Now tell us what intelligent design. Well, intelligent design is simply that you can you can see that stuff was arranged on purpose. And you can see that in our you know everyday world when you look at a computer or something like that. But ever since you know recorded history, intelligent folks have said, well, we too are designed intelligently. Look, look at how we've got our hands and right. we've got our eyeballs we can see and we've got arms and muscles to carry weapons and to gather crops in and so on. And the, the interesting thing about intelligent design is that the more you know, the more deeply you see that design goes into life and the more you know, stunning the argument for design becomes. Yeah, because you, know, you can look at this, and you 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 could never convince anyone that over a billion years the wind and the rain <laughs> formed this and shaped this. You'd be like, stop it! It has a, a top that screws onto it. It says Dasani. You're going to tell me that the letters magically came together? And I go, but then the human body is a billion times more complex. Yes. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, that's that's lowballing. That's lowballing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we would never believe this. That's Why right. Why would yeah. we buy the other? Well, e even non-artificial things. That, I mean, suppose you were walking around in South Dakota, and you turned the corner, and there was Mount Rushmore. That's and stones, you know, there's just stones there. And if somebody said, well, you know, look at that funny formation. In, in that <laughs> that almost looks like people. Yeah. It's so weird. It's like the clouds. If you look at it long enough. Nobody would believe it. And the reason is that we can see the purpose in how the rocks were carved. Right. That's how intelligent design is perceived. Uh, um, you know, Pastor Jason was saying uh, from the scriptures that we know the powers of God from what he has made. So we people, of course, are corporeal uh, beings, and we only get things through our senses, eye, eyes and ears and so on. And the way we can figure out that a mind has acted in the world is to see what they have done, how they have arranged oh, yeah. stuff, really whether it's, it's words and writings or Mount Rushmore or, or anything. If we see a purpose in the arrangement, we know that it's the work of a mind. Okay. And that's how you can look at, I mean, just things that just make sense. I mean, the, how the world, the sun is the exact distance it needs to be. They say if it's even, you know, 100 yards or, you know what I'm saying, closer, that everything is off. That's uh, right. Yeah. The moon <laughs> controls the oceans. And I've always just been mystified just by water. Water is just the way that it works. It goes up, gets clean, comes down, we drink it, it mm. flows through. We have the same yeah. amount of water today as uh -huh. we did 100 years ago, correct? Right. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, that, and it turns out that in Darwin's day, uh, Darwin, of course, uh, um, was responsible for much of the discussion yes. we're having today because yeah. Yeah. Right in Darwin's day, 
people, not only biologists, thought the, the world was a bland place. That, oh, ho-hum, this water is just bland and, you know, all, oh. these, all these things are, you know, ordinary. And they expected life to be found on the moon, on Mars, maybe even the sun, because it, it wasn't a big deal. You know, okay. it's not hard to get life. And then in the early 1910s, there was a guy named Lawrence Henderson, who was a chemist. He said... Wait a second. <laughs> you know, this if, is, if, this wa if there wasn't as much water as there is on Earth, we wouldn't have as much rain. We wouldn't have as much river. We wouldn't be able to grow the crops that we have. We'd be in big trouble. And so that was the first time that somebody started thinking about what all the features are that are necessary for life on Earth. Right. And it's only grown astronomically uh, stronger since right. then. Because you think about how many things go into place just to make the phone work. Mm -hmm. This little phone to be able to work, to go up in outer space, call somebody else. Now multiply that once again. I'm going to use the word one billion times yeah. to see how the Earth functions uh -huh. with light and sun and trees and carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide yeah. and oxygen, yeah. and how our cells regenerate. How you can cut. I can't cut my phone and it heals. No. <laughs> what if you crack it? Does Try. it get better? Try. <laughs> <laughs> so then you go, how, that is crazy to think that yeah. cut heals the body every seven years yeah. and all the things that go into the human mind, emotions, thinking. That's right. And it, it's interesting that things like that, the, the cell phone and, and uh, coag blood coagulation, so that's gravy. Uh, <laughs> because I, I was noticing a, a, a banner or sign in, in the uh, uh, vestibule uh, just a few minutes ago, a quote from Isaac Newton, uh, who said that if there was nothing else, uh, I would take my thumb as proof of the existence of God. Just because, <laughs> look what I can do with this <laughs> thumb. So I, you're right. <laughs> I've never been so amazed until you said that. Yeah. I love my phone. <laughs> yeah. No, he's fun. He is. Right, right. He makes everything better. Look. Yeah. Everything's so, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Just that alone. You can't go. Oh, yeah. you can you can communicate you can with him. This. And for, for teenagers, you know, what will you be without your thumbs? What could your games. cell phone be without your thumbs? You know, cell phones are nice, but it's the thumbs that are driving it, right? So uh, <laughs> And you know that the cat can't flush the toilet because it doesn't have the opposable thumb. I have heard that <laughs> before. That that's a quote. <laughs> Tell me what quote what movie that's from. <laughs> and so, Professor, uh, I, you. <laughs> is, you're a microbiologist. Uh, actually, I'm a biochemist. Go ahead. It uh, uh, sounds all the same to, to non-scientists, but yeah, biochemistry actually studies the chemicals of life. You know, uh -huh. what, what are we made of? We're made of matter. Matter's formed into chemicals and so on. And it turns out in Darwin's day, uh, scientists thought that the cell was a little piece of jelly. They called it protoplasm. Okay. And they thought it wasn't, wasn't too tough. Maybe it could form spontaneously from sea mud or something. It was something. not a big deal. No, no. And, uh, but since then, uh, it's been studied more and more, and it's enormously complex and sophisticated beyond our wildest dreams. It's, it's like a nanoscale automated factory that you know makes its own needs. It uh, replicates itself. It stores information. It has uh, nano machinery to run it. You know, he turns out they were wrong about it being just simple. Just a cell. <laughs> it's not. It's cell. not jelly. Yeah, yeah. That it, it's not. It, it's <laughs> it's a know, squishy. Billion but, times more uh, complicated. Yeah. yeah, billion being you know just. Big number. <laughs> big number, big, big number. One of the things I learned from your book, it's called uh, Darwin's Black Box. And I'm, have you read another book since then? I should I know have, that. I have, yes. yes. Uh, two others since then. Uh, one in 2007 was called The Edge of Evolution. And I actually have a book just came out a couple months ago called uh, Darwin Devolves. Darwin Devolves. Oh, wow, and fun. the interesting thing, which is based on the last 10 years of science research, things are really changing thick and fast, yeah. which shows that, yeah, Darwin's mechanism of random changes, random mutation and selection works, it's great, but almost always it works by breaking genes that were already there. It's not making it's, anything. It's getting worse, not better. Yeah, that, and that's exactly right. Yeah. Which so, is, there's one of the thermal laws of dynamics is that we're all <laughs> constant decaying, right? Yeah, second law, yeah. Second okay, I know it was one of them. So, yeah, because so, so, Darwin says everything gets this way, but we're seeing in life everything kind of decays. And that's right, yeah. A, a, good, a wonderful example is 
dogs, you know, okay. little bulldogs and poodles, and everybody says, oh, uh, aren't they cute? And doesn't this demonstrate the power of evolution because all these breeds came about in pretty much just a few hundred years as breeders would uh, yeah, mix and match and, and select for traits. And it's true, it's, it's really impressive. But now science has the ability to look at the DNA level of all the breeds of dogs. And it turns out they're uh, virtually all, I don't want to say all, but virtually all are due to broken genes. If you want a, a gene for a short muzzle, like in a bulldog, you break the gene that allows the muzzle to develop correctly. Now, what's the broken uh -huh. gene for height? <laughs> I think it's one we share here. <laughs> Something broke in the gene. Something broke. It didn't get better. It didn't, yeah, it didn't evolve. And even, it's interesting, even, I'm on a roll here. Go, go. <laughs> even, uh, even things that look like gains or improvements uh -huh. are He's actually, it, actually <laughs> due to uh, breaking. And there are animals, including dogs, that are highly muscled, more muscled than others. I blush. <laughs> and turns out it's due to a broken gene. Dang it! Another broken gene. <laughs> the gene that usually turns off muscle growth when it's at the right size. Okay. And so, so then you get bigger muscles than you normally would. Wow. Sometimes that's good, but most times it's not. <laughs> well, we got to pray over there, uh, Dave. We so enjoyed our show. We ran out yes. of time. Thank yeah. you so much for being here. We're yeah. at the Genesis Conference. Genesis. We'll do one every year. And so, uh, obviously, you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> but you can watch it. You yeah. can watch it. It's online. And so, we encourage you to check out some clips from the professor. And the books. Yeah. Oh, I really do. I yeah. mean, you can't get enough out of a course 10 minutes. Well, can I just say that? Darwin's Black Box, that sure. changed my life many right. years ago when I first read it. Uh, it equipped me mm -hmm. with uh, irreducible complexity of the human eye and, and some of the, the things that he showed that, that how, and what I thought was microbiology, but it's biochemistry. Yeah. Uh, it really built up my faith to see that God is in science. I mean, I always believe, of course, I believe in God and I believe his word and I have a relationship with the Lord, but it, it was some, it, it, I needed it. It was, it, it was what uh, uh, Ken Du talked about, that silver bullet. It, it allows us, in a sense, when the world is attacking for us to be able to point out, no, that's not true, that's not true, that's not true. It helps guard our heart and keep us equipped, and especially for our children as they go into the school system today. I know how bad it was just when I graduated from college, what, 25 years ago. Yeah. I mean, just inundated with, the, you know, what's wrong with the Bible, what's wrong with Christianity, what's wrong with, and uh, to have that in you to, yeah. be, to be equipped. And yeah. would, would you say that, that the advances, the, the recent advances in science is, is moving people or moving the information more towards evolution or more towards intelligent design? Oh, it's only going towards intelligent design. That's the thing about intelligent design. The more you know, <laughs> the more clearly you see it and the more powerfully you see it. Darwin's theory was pretty good, sounded like a good guess back in the 1850s right. when he first published it and not much was known about the cellular and nothing was known about the molecular basis of life. But since then, as science has progressed, it's been the very progress of science itself that's pointing so strongly to intelligent design. Wow. Which is exactly what that scripture says. Mm. Knew it a long time ago, thousands of years oh, ago. Oh, Father God, give them a great day today. Lord, bless them in everything that they do. I thank you, Lord, that your favor is on them, health is on them, you're protecting them in every way. You go before them. You follow them, and your hand of blessing is on them. In Jesus' name, amen. Watch this clip. You got Jesus on the inside. You get around people like my dad. You get around people like Ken Du, around people like Michael Behe, people who endure great persecution because of where God positioned them. You think, well, how did you do it? You ask my dad, how did you do it? You might even say, Pastor, I, I have a lot of suffering I'm enduring right now because I started this thing. You know the response you'd probably get from a man like my dad? Would be a snicker. <laughs> Opposition, suffering. Let's talk about it, man. When he decided to build these domes and God put that on his heart to put, I'll tell you what, the whole city came against us. Whole city came, came city managers, council people, they all sat him down for a meeting. Put me and my brother were there too and they sat him down and said, listen, we're so sorry, but you're not going to be able to build that building. We're not going to let you put that, those domes on Val Vista and Brown. We're stopping you right now. Our apologies. You know what my dad did? 
well, we're going to build it anyways. <laughs> when you get, the, the media was against us, the neighbors were against us, the society was against us. All great people. I'm, I love our city officials. I love our neighbors. I love our city and community. We just pray for those who sometimes come against us. We don't get mad at them. We're not trying to fight with them. Listen, God will fight for you. My dad's job wasn't to create a fight and a stir and attack them back. My dad's job was to stand firm in the faith and let God do his fighting for him. When God does your fighting, you're victorious. Let me be around some people like that. You know, Jesus can take the heat. Did you know that? You might be sitting in there, sitting in that hot spot, thinking, man, Pastor, you don't know how bad it is. Nobody could endure this. You know, here's the thing. I might agree with you. I might say, yeah, that is bad. But Jesus is on the inside of you. Don't forget to share. Like, like it. Subscribe. Hit like right now. Yes. And uh, wherever your church is, and pick up, church. pick up one of his books. Book. Get the books. You get, need the books. Get all, all three of the books. Yes. And they have a new place called Amazon. Have you heard of this? What is this now? It's a new it's a thing. It's Brazil? got this. Yeah, it's got this rhyme uh, thing. Is that the thing I heard? It's kind of like the the coyote would order things from Acme. That's what it is. He would get the, and Somebody they would just deliver it right it. to him. It's a brand new startup. Maybe look into this. It's like Acme. They just deliver it right to you. Yeah.